Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for everyone, Lord God, that is a part of what we have brought together, what you have brought together, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, just for the connection and your divine connection, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for just this space, Lord God, that, I mean, just brings off great, great energy, Lord God, and the seeds, Lord God, that have been planted in this space, Lord God, has brought us together this, this day, Lord God, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this interview, Lord God. Thank you for the engineer. Thank you for everyone that's involved. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of my plate, my canvas, and I wanted to say it in Creole, and I kind of forgot, but I'm gonna still, I'm gonna still try to get Welcome it right. To Platmoe. Welcome to Platmoe. Uh huh. Twelmoe. Twelmoe. And that's welcome to my plate, my canvas. But this is episode um, seven. Thank you for joining us. A plate is just a plate. A canvas is just a canvas. Until you put something on it, presentation is everything. And I'm here tonight. With my special, special guest. Man, when I say special, I, I really do mean special. Not sure special. Huh? Not sure about special. Listen, I have a special guest here. I met her here at the same space that we're at, we're at right now filming this podcast. And she was nice enough to lend a hand on something that I was... I mean, we we're just holding a conversation, and she actually was like, um, she was ear, uh, what was it called eavesdropping. Uh, not well, eavesdropping, but we call it ear, uh, ear hustling. <laughs> she was, she was ear hustling, and um, but it was, it was good that she did that because you know what I'm saying she dropped some great information, and that is why she's here with me today. And I thank you for her, my girl, Fabien, 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 mm-hmm. Polycarp. There you go. Woo! Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Hey, of men beneath mm-hmm. hair, care, and Garden. gardening and, env- and environmentalists. She's an artist. She's a mother and she's a mentor. And I mean, I can read everything on her. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She was born and raised here, you know what I'm saying, in Miami, Florida. I mean, she's from beautiful Haitian culture. I mean, um, she's she's really she's done it all. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She's got a master's in environmental management and sustainability. She blends her passions into business that not only nature beauty, but also promote mental wellness and sustainability. Man, however, her journey led her to a different calling, one deeply rooted in advocating in the communities like Little Haiti against the ride, the tide of environmental gentrification. So I'm not going to read everything because I'm going to go back and forth into it. But here is the one and only Fabienne. And we call her Fabi. Yes. We forgot about that. We call her Fabi. Fabi. Fabulous Fabi. Fabulous Fabi. It's a great pleasure to have you here with us tonight. Thank you. And taking your time out. Thank you. To join me on this episode. Please share what you have shared with me. Wow. With there's, my with, with my with my with my my audience. I mean Well, there's so much to share. I will say I'm this. I'm sure it is. I was one of those students that got in trouble for school in school for talking too much. So I always put a disclaimer that at some point we need to end the conversation because I tend to talk a lot. Mm-hmm. But I feel that I'm also a wealth of information based on my experiences and I'm not afraid to share. Mm-hmm. Um, my experiences and some of the things I may know that somebody else may have questions on. So um, I am the owner of several businesses. I am a mom of four. Um, I hold my master's in environmental management and sustainability. I actually um, got that degree because I used to work in construction. I worked for a luxury, a luxury developer in Miami. Right. And um, my goal was to go back and become a consultant. Um, for these organizations and these companies because there's a lot of waste that happens in construction. Okay, yeah. it is. So right. my goal was like, okay, I can go back, become an environmentalist, and then bring in my consultating um, expertise into these companies. And what happened is that as I began my studies and getting deeper into my studies, I realized that, no, I want to go back to my roots and advocate for the very communities that I lived in mm-hmm. and for those communities that were experiencing the environmental gentrification. Now that I had the wording, now I knew how I needed to show up, right? Okay. 
Yeah. So Beautiful. that's just a small snippet. I'm sure it is. Into I'm sure it is. <laughs> the last couple of years into my life. Right. And over the last few uh, few weeks of us meeting and conversating, you know, I got a chance to really like, you know what I'm saying, a little know a little bit more about you. And um, again, that's what drove me to wanting to know more because of the conversations we have. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You're real funny. You're funny. You're very funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like, you know what I'm saying? You're like, you know, when you have to like, um, but tell me more about like your background as far as like, you know what I'm saying? Like home. Oof. Like what was home like for you? Um, growing up Haitian mm -hmm. in Miami, um, it's a very spicy experience, right? Um, and growing up in a place where you're learning to be American is one thing. Right. And learning how to be American in a Haitian household, which means that's hard that, to do. I mean it's doable, Man, that's, but it's it's you're like, Haitian in the home. Right, right. Right? You eat Haitian food at home. Right, right, right. You have the Haitian rules at home, but then when you go out into the regular world, you have to find a balance. You have to find a balance. You have to find a balance in existing. And I grew up in the era where Haitian kids would get jumped for being Haitian. Mm -hmm. There was a very um there was a lot of anger coming from different cultures with Haitians being in the spaces that we all shared. And um, and we were very different culturally, the way we showed up, the way we dressed, the way we spoke, and the foods that we ate. But now that we're looking back in retrospect, we're not very different from each other. Not at all. You know? There's so, no difference, man. I mean, you know, as far as even growing up, you know, a young Black African-American man, male, mm -hmm. it's not there. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We had to scrape and scrape, you know what I'm saying, and fight mm -hmm. as well. And it was times where, especially because I was, I was born and raised in Liberty City, and then my, my parents moved um, I mean, I was back and forth, but, you know, right here in the city of Miami Gardens was back then was called Opalaka, Carol, you know, Carol city, city, Opalaka. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I saw all this develop yeah. over here and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago where you don't see, well, I, you know, we, we, I've seen so much, so much change in the, in the, in the, in the I mean, in the community, but it's like, you don't see that, like how I grew up. You don't see that no more. Well, it's like because things, you know, of course, of course, times have changed, and you know that, you know, what I'm saying, with times change, things change. I mean, you know, what I'm saying, culture change, all that kind of stuff. But it's like, you know, remember back in the days. I mean, where you can just go in. I mean, you see about a thousand kids on the street. Yeah, but times have changed drastically and dramatically. One, we live in a time where technology um, has a big influence on children. Yeah. Number one. Number two. We are learning that a lot of kids in our age group and a lot of people in our age group were really hurt. And there were things that that, that was happening to them that wasn't okay. Right. So when we talk about culturally all the things that we experience, yes, we want our kids to be outside, but we also um want them to be safe, right? True. I am a yeah. big I am a big advocate about getting outside, being with nature, but you think I'm gonna let my kids ride down the entire block? go down the block by themselves, I'm not doing that. Because mm. the times that we live in where community used to protect the, the children and used to watch out for the children, we don't really have that. People barely say hi to their neighbors. Mm. I'm guilty of that. Sometimes I've had a stressful day. I ain't gonna lie. And, like, I don't want to talk. Like, hi, you know? And okay, if well, I see you sometimes, enough, you know I try not to. But, but growing up, everybody knew who everybody was. Right. That's true. That's true. You know? And... We, I think, if I'm not mistaken, we talked about this the other day. When you know, what I'm saying, growing up in, because you didn't, you were, you didn't grow up too far from here. No, like, what, like, I grew what? up. So my mom owned her home in um, Miami Shores, but we grew up in her beauty salon in mm -hmm. Little Haiti. So that's where we spent most of our time. Uh, you get what I'm saying? We had friends in the neighborhood where we grew up, but most of our time was spent in her business in Little Haiti. And we, yeah, it is. It's grown up so much over there. I mean, because the Haitian culture then took over El Portel. That's what I mean. At, at one point, that way it was just whites. Yes. But we talked. We we were talking about this the, um, yesterday about when they come down to the businesses. Yes. That Haitians still thrive off of successful businesses in Little Haiti. Yes, because um, I think one of the things is that our perspective on what business looks like is different. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us um, flow with this perfectionism. 
that stops us from actually putting our businesses out there. And I ain't gonna lie to you, there's a lot of Haitian businesses that have storefronts that I'd be like, you didn't really think this out. You just put a business out there, right. but I commend you for being I, bold enough to do that. Of course. Right? Especially with, uh, to the flea market. Not just the flea market. Like Opelika, There's flea something that? that in Haitian culture, we in Haitian culture, that's called comes. Comes. Comes is like commerce. If you think about the word, it's okay. commerce. Commerce. And okay. when we talk about how we're investing back into ourselves, how are we creating jobs when jobs are not being given to us? Are we mm-hmm. creating jobs? Are we creating money? And this mentality that we're doing everything possible to make money because every opportunity, if I like to cook, I'm going to be cooking from my house and I'm going to feed the community. There was a Haitian lady. And I'll segue into that. She made bouillon, Haitian bouillon, Haitian on, Saturday, bouillon. on mm. Saturdays. Good stuff. And she made something called chakamai, which is a very traditional Haitian food, right? Mm-hmm. It's a Haitian dish. She sold you a cup for $5 or $8. And she sold it out of her house. Everybody in the neighborhood, in the community, would come and buy from her. Mm. And it was good. Mm. It was really good. When you think about that business mindset, it's like, it doesn't matter my circumstance. No. I have something. I'm going to go ahead and make it and bring it out there. Right. But it's the perfectionism that now stops a lot of us because we're busy comparing ourselves to other people that have mm-hmm. nothing to do with our journey. And you know, one thing about the Haitian culture, too, I mean, it's almost like they use what they have. You got no they, choice. You got no choice. When most Americans have to feel like and I'm guilty of having to have certain things in order to make the business work. When every pretty much everything is you pretty have much everything around that me. you need, everything that you need, you already have. Right. Everything you need, you already have. Mm-hmm. If you have that idea, it's already in you. Mm-hmm. That means that you can do it. Right. Right. And that's one of the questions. I mean, because I came up with some. I was just googling and everything, and it was like, how does the culture affect finance? It has a big, I mean, it has a, a big impact on it. So I grew up in a home that really shifted my perspective, especially my stepdad. And what he Ooh, did was... The general. Yes. <laughs> he would ask Fabienne, me these... give me some water, please. Fabienne. <laughs> and, you know, he had that Mufasa voice, so it would yeah, rumble yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my chest. <laughs> right. Um, but he, he like... would ask me real, real in- interesting questions. Right. Like... What do you want to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. And um, oh boy, <laughs> oh he, boy. he one day asked me that, and I was like, "I want to be a teacher." Oh boy, here we go. And in his way, even though the delivery mm-hmm. wasn't correct, but he was correct. He was like, right. "You are stupid. You mm-hmm. are a dummy, because teachers don't make money. You need to be a politician." And his idea was that. In this country, they do not value the teachers. Right. So you want to get into an industry where your voice is heard and you are bringing in money into your community and to your family. He would also take us on drives through Golden Beach. Mm -hmm. And he would say, which one is your house? So I grew up with the aspect of I have no limitations to my life. Mm -hmm. I have access to everything. When I would have friends that would talk about, oh, only white people do this. I never had that mentality. Mm. If I like rock music, I'm listening to Nirvana. It's teen spirit up in here. Okay. It's not, li- it's not limited She's to... She's going to turn up on Nirvana. Listen, it's not <laughs> limited to my skin color because I like it. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I grew up with that mentality that I have access to everything. So when we think about the history of American, Black American culture, we also have to put that into perspective, the limitation. We also have to talk about the redlining. Mm. We also have to talk about the access. And in Haitian culture, we didn't grow up with that. Haitians actually have a level of arrogance because we grew up seeing Black leadership. Mm -hmm. When you know Haiti's history and you know that beyond what we see visually right now, what's happening in the political spectrum of Haiti, we know that the people are resilient. Mm -hmm. We know that they are powerful, right? Mm -hmm. They are alchemists and they know who they are. Right. We are are a powerful people. And if we as Black people collectively take that energy and say it's not about haitian it's not about caribbean it's not about jamaican but us as black people how powerful we are as a whole collectively collectively right man 
They fear you know, that. They fear right. us with that. And it's because we don't know that within us. Like they used to say, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, wow, don't get me started. What they, what they came and did, they, was, they, they pretty much came in and they divided and conquered the, 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 the communities where even with our Hispanic community, it's almost like we already know they don't like us. You know what I'm saying? You know, ignorance and it's like, is bliss. And, 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 you know, I don't down anybody for where they're nah, at. man, I don't. Colorism. Either in the Haitian community is real, mm-hmm. right? I, I grew up with my own issues, but it took change, shifts, things that happened in my life that forced me to take a step back and really evaluate where this mindset came from. Mm-hmm. I wasn't always a person who was like, Black power, and it's about my Blackism. I never wanted to bleach my skin, but my thought process was very Europeanized. My thought process and how I viewed my brothers, how I viewed other cultures wasn't in a place where it needed to be. Mm. Once I started to realize how, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Self-hate okay. was reflected in my life. Then I started to take back my power and started to love myself so that I can love my community, so I can love my blackness in a different way. Well, what, 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 what was the age that you identified Ooh. that? I was 25. 25. I was 25. Not even 16. Not even... No. Because, you know, usually like 14, 15, 16, that's when you're going through puberty. And, no, no, no. You know, I had different becoming... issues at that okay. age. All right. You know, in Haitian culture, it's l'école, l'église, la caille. Or la caille, l'école, l'église. Home, school, and church. Those were the only things, the only social life that you had. Mm. So I did not have access to being out in the streets and hanging out like that. Um, my access came from my rebellion. And, uh, okay. and 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 starting to putting my starting to put myself in the spaces that I wanted to be in, right? But it was a big rebellion within my community. Mm. It was a big rebellion against the rules that my mother set for me. You know, at eighteen, I got my first tattoo. Listen, my mom felt like I was a drug addict. <laughs> wow, and that's you know, and that that's <clears throat> that that goes back to what your culture is all about. Mm-hmm. They don't believe. And things like that. Just like how you say you came home with the boots and you have know, say, look where my money goes. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> coming home in construction construction clothes with dirty boots and I'm all dusty, but I'm making money. You're making I'm money, doing, right. But, but she my was mom like, ain't trying to see that. She's like, look at my money in the garbage. Yeah. Like all of the money she's invested into me is not the way she imagined it. I did not show up in that way. Right. And, now tell me. That we're talking about this right here. Tell me what grandma said. Uh, my grandma. So my grandma, right. I will tell you this. Um, I grew up in a home where I look like nobody, mm. but I look exactly like my grandmother. So me and my grandmother have an amazing relationship. And I think with all her grand her grandbabies, you know mm. what I'm saying? Um, but she used to work at Jackson Memorial Hospital as a um, housekeeper meaning that she would go in and fix the beds and clean up the rooms. Mm. And she said to me, you know, I don't understand the American culture. Well, we call it environmental service. Um, environmental services. Yeah. Um, <laughs> environmental services, that's what they call it. We get it. But Back then, yeah, you know. She said to me that she didn't understand American culture. Right. And it wasn't in a way to disrespect To put it, anyone down. But it was but like it was from her perspective, trend. she's like, if I am a housekeeper... Why is my daughter a housekeeper? And then now my grandchild is a housekeeper. Right. And she would say to me, when I drop this broom, this broom is not for you to pick it up. Wow. Right? So I'm going to translate powerful. that. I'm going to translate it Please in Creole. Do. Please so do. she would say to me, Lem la ge bale a se pa pou mem pou rem asel. Mm. Fo mou te pi wo. Fo fe bel bagay nan la via. Mpa, mpa pase tout mise sa yo pou mem vin pase mem mise ya. So that means that how are we wow. lifting ourselves from the floor? If I drop the I broom, you have this, to man. be higher than what I did. You right. have to aspire to be more than what I was able to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And when we start to think about even in business, when we start to look at the future, where are we trying to go? Expectation. Well, not expectations, because no. in business, it doesn't show up the way you want it to. No, as far as but you going have back a to goal. what grandmother said, because her yes. expectations for you are bigger, higher. Yes. And but she instilled that. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, Haitian people have this thing where they want you to marry a doctor, but have they put you in a position to marry a doctor? Mm-hmm. You know, because being the doc, marrying a doctor is like right. the thing. I'm not saying that that's what you aspire for, but. 
But yeah, when, when, when we think about it, are we giving our children access to these spaces? <laughs> you want us to have a rich mentality, but right. do you give me access? Do but you put you me in position for, right. to do that? Are you exposing me to things that has a rich mindset? You can't leave me in the house all day, mm-hmm. entire summers in the home, and then expect me. Right, and they, right, expect you to, to know these things or to be able to, yes. be, to, to communicate, you know, with what's going out there in the real world. Because, you know what I'm saying, you're pretty much lame. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? You lane to the game is what they used to say. You don't know what the heck out there going on right unless the your friends tell you or you hear it and you see it in school. I'm going to shift a little bit. Okay. I want to talk about, uh, we, we, we know where, you, where, where you've been. We know where you have come. I mean, I mean it's a lot, of, lot more in the middle. Mm-hmm. But you became this person that really was attracted to, to art, mm-hmm. to um to gardening and things like mm-hmm. that. And you know what I'm saying? Like, um, what would you call it? Environmentalists. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to know more about, like, what really got you. You matter of fact, you went to uh, your high school. You went to um, Turner Tech. Turn Tech. Yes. And life began after Turner Tech. Yeah. So um, I was that person that wasn't going to have kids. I was like, no, I'm going to travel the world. I'm about to do big girl things. Right. And um, I had my first child at 21 and life completely shifted. Um, right. And um, I was a stay at home mom. Um, and then I had another kid. So by 22, I had two kids, stay at home mom. And I wanted to go back to school and I couldn't. The relationship didn't allow for that. And um, it really, I, I feel like I'm naturally a rebel at heart. Um, that marriage lasted five years Mm. and I had two kids by the age of 25. I left that marriage and, um, I then started to do my own research and went back to school and had the support of my grandmother, um, to do the things. And once I started to have access, I then moved to Atlanta and Atlanta is where I became an adult. Okay. I became not only adult, but I stepped into my blackism. Mm -hmm. I started to realize how powerful we were when I started to see people growing up in Miami. Remember, we don't have black leadership like that Mm -hmm. in the spaces. We have a lot of people who don't look like us or speak like us, and there's a lot of redlining and unspoken racism, right? Right. So going to Atlanta and seeing all these people who were black leaders, a row of cars, of Bentleys, Mercedes, and all these things. It's amazing. Yeah, now you feel like you got to get all that too. I saw people date each other on Sundays. Yeah. Like, that baffled me. I, n- I never seen people dress up and go on dates. Oh, yeah. Um, so that it's, time period for me really shifted me. Right. Moving fast forward, let's talk about where I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, almost four and a half years ago, I was an alcoholic a functioning alcoholic. Wow. Right? And what does that look like? Working in construction, your girl wanted to roll with the big dogs. So I would smoke cigars. I would drink when I get home, very stressed out because construction is very stressful. I would pour myself a glass of wine, big bottle, big Mm. glass, Mm. right? Out of one bottle, you get four glasses of wine. So I come in, a glass of wine. I'm cooking dinner, another glass of wine. I'm sitting down for dinner, another glass. You're you're taking down bottles at night. And then to go to bed, I have another glass. That's an entire bottle. And my husband at the time, he was like, hey, uh, I think you're drinking a little bit too much. I was like, you don't know my life. You don't know me. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like, bro, back up. Like, back up. Like, this (laughs) this is where I find my peace. Right. And um, what he did was so profound for me because I'm a visual person. He stopped cleaning out my bottles. So the bottles started accumulating. And then one day I opened up the cabinets and saw the amount of bottles. So I said, who's drank all this wine? Where all these bottles came from? And he looked at me, you, by yourself. And that was a reality check for me. So what that did for me was, he said to me, you know what? I will make a bet with you. Every time you have a craving for wine, I will make you a smoothie. And I love to smoothies. And I'm fancy, okay. so give me my smoothie in a wine or champagne glass with a, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Substitute, right? Yes, and literally every day that I would get out of work, he would literally be waiting for me at the door with my smoothie. Wow, okay. Right? All and right. I, would, I wouldn't talk to anybody. I would take my glass, say thank you, and I'd go sit outside. Mm. I'd sit outside in the backyard, and what that made me realize is that I needed to interact more with my space, right? So I started buying plants, and it grew. 
and it grew into something bigger. Now I had this whole garden. Wow. And now I would go outside and it almost felt like when I would lay down and do my meditation, I would breathe and I felt like the plants would breathe with me. That was real for me. That was real healing for me. And from that, I have not drank. Okay. From that transition <clears throat> into that, I found my peace in other ways. I was more intentional. I could see clearly. My body was happy. I used to, I'm skinny. I would, I would call myself skinny fat, right? Because I'm skinny all over, but then I'd have this belly looking like Mr. Burns. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got to walk it off. <laughs> it, it, like, man, I we just had a salad. It. Man, I got to walk it off. I, I couldn't walk it off. It was right. like my stomach stayed extended and my body was reflective of what was happening. COVID hit. Um, in January of 2020, I had a miscarriage because of the amount of stress I was dealing with at okay. work. And um, I realized that if it didn't translate into the miscarriage, it would have translated into sickness, disease. Okay. Right. So I decided to to quit my job. I didn't have anything backed up. I didn't have anything lined up. And I stepped out on faith. Like oh, when yeah. I say faith, yeah. I stepped out on faith. And so the looking moment, at this bio, boy, look at him, listen, man. <laughs> listen, you stepped out all right. That that shift, let me tell you something. God will send you confirmations. Yes, he will. Okay. The moment that I God. said yeah. in my mind, in my heart, that I accepted that I was going to quit that job, mm -hmm. right? I got a notification from Miami-Dade College that they owed me money. Ooh, won't he do it? Won't he do it? That was a confirmation like, girl, don't even worry about the money. It's going to come. They paid me out my vacation. They gave me a severance package. What? And then that was in February of 2020. We went down in March. What happened? Man, we, we was going in, through a rough time back we then. We went through, yeah. lock, we went in lockdown, lockdown in March. Right. So not only did I get a moment to say, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. He gave me a moment to reset. To reset. Oh, wow. He gave me a moment to reset. I know a lot of people, you know, that experienced real hardship during COVID. Yeah. But when I um, say yeah. for me, that was such a healing experience. I became a sacred woman. I went through the Queen of Fuwa 12-week initiative. I became a sacred woman. And then that's where it made, like, you know, when something clicks? Right. That's where it clicked. I had a whole nother baby. Wow. Okay? And I, I got to be active in the way that I brought this life into the world. Mm -hmm. I birthed my baby at home with a Black staff of doulas and midwives. Like, okay. when I say I moved with so much more intention what I ate— what I put in my mind, what I That's allowed a huge in my shift. Listen, you could not, you can't tell me nothing. You even started doing hair. Listen, I was always doing hair on the side because my mom. Okay, a okay, salon. that's right. That's why she did have yeah, a salon. She had her salon yeah. for over thirty I know you'd years. Be locking people up. You know? Yes, but this time I was doing locks with a different purpose. Uh -huh. I found my angle and I named my business. Um, and I'm, that name is Mebini. Mebini. I'll tell you the story behind that. Right. But so, we know one is like hands. Yes. Me, me is hands. Hands. Right. Benny is Benny blessed. Is blessed. Blessed hands. Blessed hands. Wow. So I, I, my ancestral gift are two things. We focus on the crown coming from my mom and doing hair and making people's hair grow. Right. And we are dreamers. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I had a dream that I bought a, I purchased a property. And when I purchased the property, me and my mom in the dream are looking at the plans and I'm like, oh, this is a nice house. And then she looks over and we're looking at the plans and it shows that it also came with a farm. Wow. And my okay. mom in the dream, like she was like, oh, pizza, mil Benny, mil Benny, mil Benny. And she kept, them. she kept doing that <laughs> in the dream. She was like, mil Benny, mil Benny. And then we're walking to the farm and it has me Benny there. And my mom is waving in the air like this. And I'm just like, I woke up out the dream like, oh, my God. I receive it. That was it. That was it. I wrote it down. I went on the Sunbiz. I took the name. You know what? I'm going to just do it real quick. I'm gonna, um, if you don't, if you, if you, if you don't do it, mm -hmm. if you dream about something in the middle of the night or whenever you dream about it and you wake up, don't go back to sleep. Write it down. I don't. I don't necessarily write down my dreams. Here's another thing that I. The do. truth. The the facts of that dream are very important because it's part of your vision. It's part. Of, it's part of the vision. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to 
If you think about it, you create a, pro- a contract with yourself. But right. I also tell you another way, right? Because I'm saying we don't remember the whole dream. No our, 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 you know, the word is bond. Right, right, right. We are powerful with the things that we say. We are powerful with right. what it's we speak into our lives. Right. I do the voice message, voice memo. Oh, wake okay. Up, I see what you're saying. And I talk because sometimes yeah. I don't feel like writing. You right, know right, what I'm right, right, right. But well, that I mean, voice, your phone be right there next to you. I mean, you, you know, you pick memo, it up. Right. You talk about it and you leave it there. And leave it there, right. That that energy that you have at that moment, well, you will feel that the next time you come yeah, back. Yeah, because to that. you wouldn't be you wouldn't have what you have going on right now, even with your um my nonprofit. The nonprofit, which you know what I'm saying, we're gonna we're gonna have to do a part two. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. definitely gonna have to do a part two mm-hmm. of, of, of of this. Um and also the um your journal. Yes. That you created. Yes. That spiritual that was, journal. That spiritual journal is yes. beautiful. I can't wait to see it on shelves. Yes. And so, it's very important that we see that just like, you know, everything else that, that you're doing. And I know we're going to be working closely together yes. because you've helped me out. You gave me a lot of information and we talked about uh, finance. We talked about uh, entrepreneurship. We talked about um, nonprofit. Yes. Which you do have a nonprofit. Share yes. A little bit <clears throat> about the nonprofit that you have. So, because my healing came out of gardening, um, mm. the name of my organization is called Mambini Gardening. And what we use, we use gardening as a tool to teach mental wellness. So, we have three initiatives. The first initiative is that we go into Title I schools and we teach children how to identify their emotions. Mm. We teach them about plants. We teach them about understanding how to read a label and nutrition. And then we build out a garden with them. That garden, what it essentially does is a safe space for them to decompress. Because after COVID, we really don't know the long-term effect of COVID on these kids. And what I do know is that a lot of these kids are under stress. So if we teach them how to recognize their emotions and to actually sit with that, identify it, and then to breathe through it and to process through it, then we've created amazing people that have emotional intelligence, mm-hmm. right? The second initiative is that we go into the communities once uh, once every quarter and we create food boxes that are based on the season. We celebrate the I end. I love that. Yeah, we, you know, because you know, when we are chef, in sync. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's, I'm interested in that. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So when we are in sync with our diets and with the seasons, it makes us live longer and easier. There's no resistance in our bodies, right? Mm. So in the season of winter, this is like hearty foods. You know, it's heavier foods because we're cold and we're kind of like less colorful and things of that nature, right? Right. So then, but when you go into the summer, you're talking about lighter foods, more watery foods that are in alignment with our bodies. The third initiative, um, which is, it speaks so much to my heart, is called Papio in the Garden. Nice. Papio in the Garden is basically an eight-week initiative where we teach women how to love themselves, right? We provide nutritionists, yoga instructors, mental wellness um, people. Um, we provide a financial advisor. And what happens is that in that eight weeks, we're following the metamorphosis process of the butterfly, creating the butterfly garden in tandem with the changes that these women are now experiencing in their lives. And for me, it is a beautiful thing when we watch the metamorphosis of a butterfly because then we can see how that's in tandem with our lives. We know that when women are good mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially, that not only the men do better, the children do better, but the communities do better. You're absolutely right about that. I mean, you know, it just, again, it takes everybody to be clear-minded and on the same, what we call, you know what I'm saying, on one accord. Mm -hmm. But it's very important too, especially for the household. Yes. And you have kids, and that's why it's important for us to pay attention to Everything that's going on around you, especially in the household. Yeah. If your wife I mean, ain't got peace. You made a shift. If your wife ain't got peace, you ain't got peace, my friend. Oh, I, I got peace at my house. Listen. No, <laughs> no but, listen. but I understand where you're coming from, and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I'm grateful and, for that. You yeah. know, that to be in that mindset and to have that shift. Right, right. And to have queens around me right. and women who have helped me to see the direction that I needed to go and having mentorship. You know, and having people around me who believe in what I believe in, who see my vision and to pour into me and to provide information that just made so much sense to me and in alignment with my dreams as well. Mm. You know, so it's important. Like when we talk about faith, I am not a religious person. 
I don't go to anybody's church but my the one that lives in me. Okay. Right? That's just me to each his own. But the way my belief, the relationship that I have with God, listen. Amen. Listen. I step out on faith. All when right. I quit my job, they were like, Fabi, how are you going to do it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Fabi, do you have a job lined up? No. Mm-hmm. Fabi, do you know what you're going to do? No. <laughs> I don't. Right. But I stepped out on faith knowing that this was not for me. Right. What they were giving me was not for me. It was not in alignment with me anymore. And my spirit knew it. My body knew it. And all the signs were there. Sometimes we'd be working. Um, all the signs are there, but we're like, oh, but I got to do this. Meanwhile, you got a whole business sitting down on a shelf That's that true. you are not investing your time or your energy in. I met a sister who makes, okay, I'm very sensitive to smell because I have all types of allergies. Mm. This sister makes her own perfume. I I found her perfume because another friend had it and I was like, can I have this? Mm. She was like the audacity to ask me for my perfume. <laughs> and I was like, yes, but it smells good. I need this. Come to find out, sis is not selling her stuff. No? And I'm like, why? Here it is. I'm going to the mall to go buy perfume and they're trying to sell me an oil perfume for $400. And this sister got a, a perfume oh, that... She's working at a job where she's probably miserable. And here it is. She has this product. She got it right there with her. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes we have to release that mindset of like, it's not going to work out for me. It needs to be perfect. Just put it out there. Mm. Just put it out there. And for those who are listening, you might have something that's around you. You might have a business that you want to start. You might have, no matter what it is. It can be right there in your house. It can be right there in front of you. It can be something that was left in the garage that you ain't touched in five years, and it can be created as a business. Mm -hmm. So speaking to someone like Fabi and getting these gems and stuff like that helped me because I was more like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to learn how to do this. I want to learn how to do this or whatever. And she was like, man, just do it. Yeah. You know, I've been told that so many times that I always come up with something, you know, we have caps, excuses. Our caps always be, you know, we, we have be, excuses. We be capping, you know what I'm saying? The caps that be capping. Perfectionism. Perfectionism it, is right, a weakness. Because it's, it's, it really stops a lot of black people no, from putting their businesses because out there. It's not so much that you're scared of failure, but it's almost like you don't want to step out into something because now you're thinking about resources. Now you're thinking about this. And we talked about this a couple of days ago as far as, Listen, it's grants out there for this. You know what I'm saying? You can, you know, get, have your business funded. And I mean, and Mimi was over here ear hustling. And I want you to tell them a little bit more about, uh, about Mimi before we get, uh, before we wrap this up. Mimi King is an amazing, amazing. Yeah, but she dropped amazing. right there, like, all Listen, these nuggets. If, if you want help with your business, yeah, if you want some guidance, come to the Coast Space. There you go. Come and reserve some time because here in this space, what they do provide with you is office hours. <laughs> and office hours with people that will drop gems on you that people pay thousands of dollars you never to know who you're invest gonna be. in. You never know who you're so going to be. So when you come here, go on to the Coast Space Miami website. Go ahead and book and see who is up next. Mm-hmm. One of the things you can do is also request to have office time with Mimi King. Google her. Look her up. When I say we have resources here, everything that we need, we already have. I'm going to revert back to that. Everything we need, we already have. And when you start taking yourself outside of your home and you start talking to people and you start putting yourself in the spaces where you are going to meet people, they will come to you. My prayer is always to ask God to put the right people in my path so that I may live in my truth so that I may be the highest version of myself. And boy, has he done it. Right. But it's not going to happen in, in, my, in my office at, at, at somebody's job. It's not going to happen right. in my house without me talking to anybody It's nothing about like up close and personal because we can do it on social media. Yes. And then having nothing. the right people. Right. But sharing your story with the right people because some people will dead your dream before it even begins that's true that's another story but i'm not even putting that negativity out there no nah, but we all you come into energy over here yes you come into spaces like this and mm-hmm. you will feel it yeah you will feel it shout come. out to joy for allowing her vision to come to life and that's her real name joy yeah her real name joy you know and shout out to even yes. you know what i'm saying even shout out to her husband you know what yes. i'm saying enoch you know what i'm saying which is my guy that's my man my tax guy my guy you know what i'm saying he's very 
you know what I'm saying, loving and God-fearing guy, you know what I'm saying, family man, and also Ashley. All three of them, I'm talking about together, are such a blessing. And I mean, Ashley is such a beautiful heart. Eat Well Exchange. You check her out on Instagram at Eat Well Exchange. It's an entire um, family. Yes, yeah, an entire family things. of just beautiful knowledge. And just they're, they're just beautiful hearted people. And I just want to um, thank God for um, blessing me to be a part of their life as well. But yes. we're going to get ready to wrap this up. But I want, Fabi, what you, what you want to share? Um, but I want you to share all the information. Of okay. course, so, platforms where they can find you, um, platforms where they can find uh, Mimi. Yes. Even though we're gonna we're gonna put it up there. We're gonna put we're gonna it. put all of the links to everybody that we're gonna we put mentioned. all the links right. Um, for me, you can find me on several pages. Right, Mebeni, M E N B E N I. You look it up, you're gonna see Mebeni Hair, which is my natural hair care line. Tell that's right. Tell the camera yeah. where they can find M E N B E N I dot com. Mm-hmm. is my natural hair care line. You can book an appointment for your locks. I take a holistic approach towards locks. So we talk about growing your hair mm-hmm. from the inside out. Um, the second thing is mebeni.org. That is my nonprofit organization. You will see everything that I have going on, all the blessings that I have. And you can find me on social me- media, on on TikTok and on um, Instagram at Mebeni Hair and Mebeni. Many, many gardening. Um, M E N B E N I hair. M E N B E N I. Y'all gardening. getting all this? And listen, I am a wealth of resources. Oh yes, I do. don't gatekeep. If I learn something, I'm excited about it. I'm gonna talk about it. Yeah. Um, and if I don't have the information, and I know somebody who has the information, I will share it. Oh, the with information you. at Cold Space. Yes. Yes. All the information at Cold Space. Yes. Go check out their page on Instagram at Cold Space. And trust me and believe, I couldn't wait to get back home from Carolina because I knew once I got back, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, things was going to start back, you know, things were going to start rolling. And I ran into this beautiful soul right here. And I mean, I'm talking about like, listen, we're on a journey and we're going to get some things done. Not only that, you know, we're going to be doing another episode of this podcast, part two of this episode, but we're going to be doing some other things that we got. I got a lot of things that I've got uh, uh, in the works you know, my, my golf program, you know, Tea Time Urban Youth Golf Program that's going to be um, uh, coming up. And I'm working on that with a beautiful young lady who is just very helpful. Her name is Ambry. Um, you know, we were just talking yesterday and I mean, she's already got the ball rolling. I mean, we about to have some things, make some things happen. And when y'all see it, do not hesitate to try to be a part of it. Please. You know, and um, again, if anybody want to DM me any information, if you want to be a part of this ep- uh, this this podcast, um, get on and share your story and talk about anything, please feel free to hit me up in my DM, my plate, my canvas, or you can hit me up in my personal DM at Chef T Will, and um, yeah, but I mean. I know she 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 shared a lot. I know she got a lot more to share, but man, we're gonna do a part two of this right here. Yeah, we gotta start and talking about the got, art. We gotta start talking about the art. I mean, you can drop a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You can tell them. A I'm little I'm bit. a visual artist. Right. Um I have all my children are artistic, not autistic, but artistic. Artistic. And artistic. her son is actually a vegan chef. He is a sous chef it's at a vegan sous chef. in yeah. Fort Lauderdale. I am extremely proud of him. I'm proud of him too. He's a chef. My second child is a animation artist, Amaris.psd, right? That's wow. A-M-A-R-I-S-E. She's in California right now on her third year of college at a school called CalArts. If you know Tim Beautiful. Burton and all these people, they were the ones that went to that school, okay. created by Disney, an amazing school. Uh, amazing opportunity for her I and she it. willed that into her life okay yeah that's a whole nother story <laughs> right, right my 12 right. year old she is a singer songwriter she has three shows in march paid gigs i love this for oh her. we got a show to go to yes a three she has three gigs three paid gigs right. um she's a singer songwriter musician um an actress and she does all the things one of the things i am so proud of is her walking in her truth and that's then beautiful. you know i got my little pandemic baby um, that really opened up my eyes to spiritually, she also came in a dream um, several times, wow. um, spiritually opened me up to how powerful I was and how I needed to stop shrinking myself. Because us as black women, that's something that we tend to do to make other people comfortable. Yeah. But our truth doesn't sit there. Right. Our truth relies. And I'll say this. I've learned that in my vulnerability, that is where I hold power. 
Beautiful, and that's uh, beautiful said. Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful words so, of wisdom. So, and she is full of wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, in my vulnerability, that is where my power lays. I no longer carry that. I'm a strong woman. No, I'm soft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm soft. I'm tired. I can't carry it. Right. Um, but watching my children grow into who they are today, um, watching how this baby has changed my life and my perspective, I'm beyond grateful for the life that I live because I feel like I have held um, the power in creating that reality for myself. Man. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we, can, we can continue to go on and on but listen we're going to wrap this up again thank you for joining us yes. on another episode of my plate my canvas where a plate is just a plate a canvas is just a canvas until you put something on it presentation is everything thank you to my lovely guest once again i'm gonna call her fabi but hey listen she's gonna go ahead and drop some information um on um her page follow her again um, on social media everything is going to be on my page you know where you can find her if you go to my page right now you'll see the post that i posted last night of the flyer her uh instagram is right there and you can dm her you know what i'm saying and if you want to book a consultation with her to talk about anything as far as finance and development uh, financial development and whatever it is dealing with art hair gardening or whatever the case whatever it is you can contact her. And that's what this platform is all about. Food, art, entertainment, culture, and much, much more. Thank you all again for joining us. My name is Chef T. Will, and we are out. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Bye. All right, y'all. This was a long talk. I appreciate you coming. Man.